Good morning. Welcome to Wake Up Real Estate. Ryan is back. He's back in Florida after being back in Pennsylvania, after being back in Florida. Smash the bell, please. Like, comment, subscribe, all those fun things. It's a Wednesday, so it's What's Working Wednesday. I have a new, uh, a new, new construction short form video script that oh. I am testing. This is a follow up to uh, what's been a little bit of an ongoing conversation on the show the last couple of weeks. I'm going to share that and then we'll actually put the script into a doc and get that under scripts and templates at wakeup.realestate, just one of many reasons to uh, to grab your free account or uh, maybe if you already have one, come on back and check out what we have available for you. We'll put that in there for anyone that is interested. And then uh, on this afternoon's mastermind, I'm gonna take that video and uh, launch a new ad uh, test with that video um, as a follow-up to, uh, to a test that failed that I shared last week. Anyway, that was a long, uh, a long intro. Ryan's got a social post. Uh, I also wanted to share something as a follow-up to yesterday's credit direction, uh, session we did as well that I think will be valuable for everyone. It was a great question I got on Monday from one of our referral partners in, uh, in Georgia. Ryan, your social post, and now your, uh, uh, what, what do you got? There? Oh, there we go. Yes. Uh, so this is pretty interesting. You guys should go watch this if you can. Uh, this is a video on Ken McElroy's channel. Um, okay. And uh, it makes the argument, Josh, that if the Fed lowers interest rates, it would actually be good for inflation, which a lot of people believe it's the other way around, that lowering inf interest rates causes more spending and, and causes prices to go up. We've been in sort mm -hmm. of a low interest mm -hmm. rate environment. And that's what caused housing prices to go up. And uh, the argument is really interesting. Um, it, the argument is that it makes it easier for more current homeowners with lower interest rate mortgages to move and more willing to move, which would cause more supply in the market. Because if I've got a 3% mortgage, I can't go get a, if I go get a smaller house while I'm downsizing and I am now at a 7% mortgage, I'm going to pay the same for the smaller house. Um, I'm not saying I agree with this argument, but it's interesting. And the other the other side of that is that it makes it easier for builders uh, to borrow and directly create more supply. So it makes it cheaper for builders to do their thing. That part of the argument I really buy. Yeah. So, um, hmm. so um, you know, these kinds of posts, uh, this is what's going on in the world now. Um, it's Ken McElroy's channel, Fed Planning Major Economic Reset to Lower Inflation. I don't know if that that's a weird title, but it's not really what it's about. It's about real estate and how lowering interest rates would affect uh, real estate supply, basically, um, which could be good for for uh, for things. So, uh, yeah, if you want to share that, go ahead and share that. That's my social post of the day. Um, and then, you know, at the end, I like these macroeconomic issues because you can end with like, what do you think could lower interest rates actually work? And on this video, you'll notice there's tons of comments. People have opinions about this. So anytime you can post something that people would have opinions about and you ask yeah. for their opinion, you're going to get good engagement. So, yeah. Andrew asks, uh, Josh, can you share the reverse psychology text uh, about, I realize you're not ready to sell, uh, but when, blah, 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 we, are you looking uh, are you staying local or leaving the area? I thought I saw it yesterday, but I can't find it. Uh, all of them, all of them, Andrew, are under scripts and templates at wakeup.realestate. Um, that, I think we also shared that one last Tuesday. So if you just uh, refuse to go to the Wake Up site and log in, um, not you, Andrew, but but someone. I believe the the direct link is in the the notes for that session as well. Um, I'll share my screen because I was going to anyway, and I'll show you where you can find it on the Wake Up site uh, in just a second. Here, I have a couple of things that I am going to share as well. Let's start uh, with where you can find that script. So, uh, in the members area, scripts and templates, reverse psychology. April 9th. Um, you can also find it in the last Tuesday session. Um, okay, so I'm going to start with this, which is the uh, I, I recorded this video yesterday. It was a nice sunshiny day. Short and sweet, under 30 seconds. I'm not going to turn the audio on because I don't think it comes through right. Yeah. Uh, um, 
But what I'm going to do is uh, we're gonna we're gonna take this and make this put it into a doc where you can have the actual script. And um, I weave in two calls to action, which I don't normally do. In other words, two different times. I mentioned if you're interested, comment new below, shoot me a DM, or go to joshvips.com forward slash new. I, I I do a quick little intro. So if they only watch five seconds, I've got a call to action in there. And then I make the case a little bit more and have the call to action again at the end. I'm going to then take this and uh, and create a new ad campaign test to see if I can beat um, the performance, which is not going to be hard to beat, quite honestly. It was it was definitely a fail. We spent 30 bucks and generated one lead. Um, I think, uh, you know, the nice blue sky, the blurred out background, the live to camera, the uh, the captions. I mean, we'll see what happens. I, I, I'm confident that this one will work a little bit better, but you never know until you actually run it out there and see what happens. Uh, that is what I'll uh, show everyone uh, as part of our mastermind this afternoon at 1 Eastern, wake up that real estate forward slash MM. You can register for free, attend those for free um, uh, for anyone interested. And uh, the I think it was two weeks ago that I, I built version 1.0 of that if you want to check that out as well. Um, one other thing, and and I, I think, uh, you know, we may just end up keeping it short and sweet because I have an appointment uh, later. Okay. Actually, uh, so, side note. So the appointment that I have is, uh, is, is a part of an ongoing uh, story here of the week. So Monday morning, I talked about personalized video, email, and text messages. And then uh, Ryan wasn't here yesterday, but I mentioned how that afternoon I got an email from someone looking for a realtor to help them sell a home in my community, in my neighborhood. It was the son of some older parents. The, 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 the husband just passed away and the wife is now in long-term care. Um, they were both in their 90s. I know the house. I know the 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 uh, the couple, the the one sister is kind of friendly with with Pam. They're not friends, but you know if they see each other at a school event or whatever, they'll they'll have a conversation. So anyway, he emailed me. I replied with a personal video message, which by the way, he when he called me later that afternoon said, "Wow, that was awesome." Essentially, uh, and now I have an appointment to uh, to take a tour and. Uh, if I don't screw it up, I should be listing it later this week or or early next. Um, so uh, just another um, bit of evidence of using personal video and text messaging, right? Um, I sent that as a follow up, and he called me later that afternoon. Yeah, um, like I didn't chase him. I I answered his question that he emailed me in a way that delivered value. Um, I was very transparent. He was asking about commissions. Um, uh, you know, I'm sure in part with, uh, what's going on with all these settlements and stuff. And I was very transparent. I said, you, uh, you told know, them that that 6% is the standard commission. It's that like all standard. And we, I won't, don't even, I won't even step foot in the door unless we're already, no, I said, uh, uh, they always, for us, they always have been and always will be negotiable. And then I gave him two examples, the, the two most recent homes that I've sold in the neighborhood. I just showed him, here's what we listed them at. Here's what we sold them for. And here was the commission. And that, that was it. Like I wasn't, I wasn't making the case one way or the other. I'm not, I'm not reading that. We can put it on the screen. I'm not reading that. <laughs> Ernest, we're not talking about commissions. We're not, we're not. Fixing prices or good one, we're not, we're not doing it. <laughs> That's a good one, actually. That's that is, when somebody asks. I, I like it. Yeah. So anyway, one other thing that I had to share today. Yesterday, Jordan and I did a credit direction 101, our our mortgage info sessions that we do uh just about every Tuesday at one Eastern. Uh we were talking about credit direction. And uh, and how that plays a role in us helping people get uh, qualified for a mortgage. And um, 
in promoting that, I got a question from Campbell, who's one of our realtor referral partners. Campbell's been on some great clients. We have two that we're working with that he sent, uh, I think, just last week. Um, his question was, what's the minimum credit score you can work with? And then he just noted, this is a general question, not about a specific client. So our topic yesterday was credit direction, but we actually started by breaking down uh, different credit score bucketing, depending on programs. And my intention is to, A, create a nice little infographic yeah. that you all can, can use as you so please. Uh, B, I'm going to create some short form video content and a script that you could, you know, that you could use yourself if you want. This and is a just great trip email. Yeah. Oh, so there you go. There you yeah. go. Um, and, and so I want to share this here because I, I thought it was incredibly valuable. And you may have people that you've talked to recently, you've talked to in the past. And you may not even be aware of some of this, because I can remember vividly uh, at some point last year on the show, Ryan being shocked uh, that you could qualify for an FHA mortgage uh, at, at 500 credit score. Um, now, it's not as easy and you need more down, but it is possible. And, and we've we've actually had several uh, uh, mortgages that have closed and funded this year uh, of credit scores at like 535, 523. Uh, uh, 565, something uh, along those lines. So very quickly, just breaking this down here. For FHA, for FHA, credit score 500 to 579, minimum 10% down, okay? So if your clients have money or the availability of that, it could be gift funds, there's any number of different ways or strategies to get that 10% down, they may be able to qualify even if they have, let, let's say, less than, than perfect credit. At 580 plus, at 580 plus, that's where we can get into three and a half percent down. Okay. Uh, and the reason why I have 580 plus with AUS, that's automated underwriting. Um, it, at 580 plus, if we get an a AUS positive hit, deep down payment assistance is possible. But if your clients are looking for or interested in a down payment assistance, generally speaking, 620 to 640 is more likely. Okay, 620 to 640 is more likely. Okay, so that's FHA. USDA minimum score 580. Now, more typically for USDA is 620 to 640. All right. VA, there actually is no minimum credit score. Now, there are other factors at play here. Uh, they'll look at the credit history over the last two years. Uh, and the important takeaway for VA is manual underwriting is more likely than other loan types. Okay. So, so if, if we have someone who is VA eligible, we can get more, you know, we can get our hands dirty a little bit more and, and, in in the manual underwriting process and, and be more likely to be successful than some of the other loan types, okay? Conventional, 620, uh, that will require a large amount down, okay? 620 will require a large amount down. At 680 plus, it's way more advantageous. Uh, you can get lower down payment, uh, and there are some other advantages at 680 plus. For seconds, so a he loan or a he lock, closed end second mortgages, things of that nature. We're looking at 620 bare minimum on a primary and 660 to 680 for a secondary or non-owner occupied investment property type thing. And then one other uh, note here for DSCR, minimum, bare minimum 575. Now what I tell people, we have lenders that will go down to a 575 on DSCR, but it's very difficult to make the numbers work or to make the deal pencil at that at that credit score because of the way the the rates and fees are structured uh below 620 possible but difficult at 620 to 640 we have way more options and that's much more ideal so just i thought i would share that as general information as you are having conversations as you're hopefully using 
the text and email scripts that we share and that you have available to you. Um, just to be aware of those things. And um, if you have clients that are interested in credit direction, uh, you can refer them to us directly. You can just make a warm handoff by email, text, or phone. Uh, and or we just uh, built out a new credit direction lead capture page in the members area. So you can just use that if you want. We did? Uh, be part of your follow-up. Uh, well, we, mean, we meaning Mike. Okay. I did. Because <laughs> uh, we knew we knew Ryan was busy. Um, so uh, you can find that and and uh, you can find that and all of the. Uh, I'll bring it up. Of okay. the lead capture. Okay, perfect. Ryan will bring it up for everybody here. So you can find those lead capture pages under uh, lead capture tools and then mortgage lead capture pages uh, right there. Credit direction. Good job, Mike. Yeah. Uh, Ernest says. Uh, Ernest says, let's go DSCR. Absolutely. DSCR is a wonderful product. It's it's a wonderful product. Um, and um, two or three weeks ago, we did an info session with Taylor on that. Uh, you can find that. That's also in the members area under our mortgage uh, recordings, uh, or you can find it on the Wake Up Real Estate channel. Uh, you know, if you're curious about that and, and how you might do more deals with DSCR. It'll be a great topic you know, around this, what you were just talking about a great subject line for a video be or an email. Can you buy an investment property with a credit score under 600? Mm -hmm. Something like that. Um, or just here's, here's five ways to get a mortgage. If your credit score is under 550, now you're going to attract difficult deals, but yeah, but you're going to get a response, right? Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. Um, cool. Is FHA still the most popular mortgage program? I'll be honest, Chris, I would have to look up the data. Um, I would be shocked if it isn't because it's, it's also the best deal right now, yeah. rate wise. And even when you factor in the mortgage insurance, they've recently, um, man, the days, weeks, and months just, uh, I lose track of them, but some, at some point in the last 12 to 18 months, they drastically reduced the percentage of PMI, which, um, lowered the overall cost for FHA. So, um, those sellers and listing agents may not love FHA compared to conventional. If, if, if both are in play for a borrower, FHA is going to be the better deal almost every time for the borrower, for the borrower. Can I share some? You have another one there? No, go ahead. Uh, oh, that's a loaded question from Alina. Adds to... Seller. Well, you know what? Well, here, let, let's, I'm going to answer it quickly and easily. Yeah. Two ways, two ways to think about it. Um, do you go right for the, the sellers, right? right. And, and from the home value or cash offer perspective and Alina, if you go to wake up that real estate, use the chat widget, Michael give you ads that we were running late fall, early winter that were working like crazy to get homeowners to opt in to request a home value. Okay. Number one, number two, the other approach to take is to lead with a buyer offer that is likely to have a high percentage of the interested parties who already own a home. So offering, for example, uh, you know, the short form video that I showed at the beginning, if you're offering a, a list of all of the um, new single family, new construction homes available, you know, a lot of the a high percentage of those buyers are, it's not going to be their first home purchase. Okay. So um, we have been proponents of the, the idea that, I mean, we've been, we've been banging this drum for years and years and years that in many cases, the best seller campaign is a well-crafted buyer offer. I just like, uh, I then, like investor side stuff because you're always going to get somebody who owns a home. Just Yep. And then Andrew, like, another perspective of this, and this works great as well. And, and I've done a bunch of transactions from, from this offer as well. Uh, down, my downsizing ads generate leads approximately $5 a day. So the downsizing ads aren't, aren't, you know, 
most would categorize as not directly seller ads. But if I'm thinking about downsizing, it probably means I've got a bigger home and I want a smaller home, right? So like that, this, that's a good scenario. We had a bunch of you guys, you know, do this with good cost per lead uh, last October through December. It started to fizzle out. It was an extremely tough market late fall. It's slow naturally anyway, that time of year. And, you know, I know a lot of people who are doing this. We had about 10 people doing it. Let's gave up. But it still works really well, the downsizing thing. Um, yeah. So, you know, just showing that's where I would go first. Yeah. Because you got said, oh, that indirect way is very smart. Probably get leads at much lower cost. Thank you. Yes, that's the yeah. thing. You absolutely do. You're going to get the same lead at a much lower cost. That's that's sort of what I, this relates to what I was going to bring up, Josh. I, I wanted to show an example lead that came in off of uh, a property listing type Facebook lead ad. Okay. Um, and this plays into your one campaign idea where you're just running ads in the same market, right? Um, and you don't really worry about retargeting maybe because you're just running the same campaign and the same people are seeing it. Is that a fair way to say yeah. that's the gist mm -hmm. of that? This lead came in in March um, off of a specific listing and it got a response. Um, Thanks for stopping by and looking at listings on the site. And then the woman gave her life story. She's moving down from Ohio. Um and the agent doesn't seem to have replied at all. <laughs> so, the, yeah, yeah. So, um, but the ads kept running. She opted in again to the same ad. Mm -hmm. So the system yeah. sent a new auto text. And she said the same thing again. Um, I think she, or she opted into a different ad. See, it says, hi, thanks for visiting our site. Are you focused on any specific areas of property? Text? She opted in for a different ad, but the, the ads are running all in this market. And the Facebook algorithm, the point I'm trying to make is picking up that same person who's in market and they're yeah. opting again. And then automation can get you into conversations. I just wanted to share that. I thought it was interesting. Yeah. Um, Chris asked Google ads or Facebook. Both work great. What Ryan was referring to and when he had that lander up, that, that, those were Google ads. But but Google. I think I think Andrew is referring to Facebook ads here. Yeah, he is. Uh, but the downsizing, that downsizing offer, we have proof and, and examples, et cetera. That work great on both Facebook and Instagram because it's you know more more uh, more boomers on Facebook. Let's be honest, uh, and then also on uh, on Google. Yeah, but you gotta. It's not gonna work in the first three months. That's what frustrates me. It's just it. You're not gonna see our ROI in the first three months. Is that fair, Josh? It is very Something. unlikely. The cash to conversion cycle is difficult to make that work. Especially and and yet I have, we have examples, you know, we have lots of examples of the, the first week you're running a campaign, you get somebody that it, it just like the timing was right. And there was a connection there and it happens, but it, that usually is the exception to the rule. Street text calls that a unicorn, right? Like yeah. if, if we're basing our, our decisions on the, the unicorn buyer or seller, um, that's just a bad business model. To, to follow right um we 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 talk we say this often i haven't said it recently your two main functions besides providing great service are to grow your database and nurture your database like that is the two most important functions that we have in this industry in this business and so however you do that google ads facebook ads TikTok ads apparently because ernest is chiming in that TikTok. Ads are a great way to run cash buyer ads for seller leads. Um, however you're doing that, there are lots of right ways to get to that result of more people in your database and growing your relationship or nurturing those those contacts. I mean, that's really what, what this business comes down to. And then playing the long game, playing the long game, which I know is easier said than done in, 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 in many ways. I might have showed this the other day, Josh. Three years ago, this lead came in mm -hmm. and responded to an email off a property alert yesterday or whatever it yep. was. It was yesterday yep. when I mentioned it the other day, but in the last week. Yep. All right. Some housekeeping items. Uh, one Eastern today, our mastermind, wakeup.realestate forward slash MM. I am going to take that short form video that I shared and we're going to run an ad using that uh, to test uh, the offer to see if it was just the video or if I need to change something else. Uh, to get it to work, in, you know, in in uh, the new iteration. 
Uh, that's number one. Number two, Ryan, uh, I have a conflict tomorrow. Are you yeah, no uh, good to fly solo for Tech Tip Thursday? Right on. And then uh, we should both be here on Friday for Follow Up Friday. I will share my weekly email newsletter template uh, for Friday and some other uh, follow up takeaways. I have uh, an email scheduled for noon today, uh, blasting all of the homeowners in my database back to my iList dashboard. Uh, and uh, that will be followed up with a bump text. So I'll have some, you know, I'll have some data and stats on that. I haven't done that in a while because I'm a slacker. I really should be uh, doing that religiously once a month, uh, but I haven't sent that out in uh, in a bit. So we should see some activity from that. I'll share those. And uh, yeah, we'll make it a, a great rest of the week. Um, check out the site, wake up real estate. Use the resources, the scripts and templates, the lead capture pages, et cetera. Uh, hope you can join me today at one. And if not, uh, you can see Ryan here back uh, tomorrow, same time, same place. Great. Thanks, guys.